Hello and welcome to the Striking Scorpion 82 channel. I am your host, JB Wargamer 87, Battle Brother of Striking Scorpion 82, and for at long last, another painting tutorial uh, is on the channel. So, in the brand new studio of which I've been working on for the past three months, it is finally finished, and I'm gradually going to add some bits to improve the studio. Uh, over the course of time, but we've got the basic essentials, uh, much better lighting, much better camera angles, and more modular, uh, a much more practical studio than I had in the past. The, the past studio that I had, it served me uh, for many years since I was 13, so I've had that studio for about 20 odd years, so it's done very well. I've moved into a new house, and now I've got my very own studio uh, to paint models. So I can't wait to paint these miniatures and at long last get some reinforcements on the way uh, for both the channels. So here it is. Uh, now there's some slight disclaims that I had uh, from the past. Now the <laughs> one was the lighting, people did complain about the lighting. I totally understood that. I had literally had three studio lights shining on the model and it still didn't quite come out because it was all dark and that kind of thing. It was an old house that I lived in. And then um, the other thing as well was the camera angle as well. Now I'm left-handed when painting. <laughs> so uh, when the, uh, the camera wasn't positioned correctly because it was off, up in a loft and it was very awkward and the roof was literally at an angle. So I literally had no room to put the camera, but now there's a lot more room uh, that I can do my filming, so it's a lot more practical. So that's just a few things I needed to clear up uh, for before we commence this uh, painting tutorial. So, what are we waiting for? Uh, if you find, just, just before this video starts, just to uh, keep a note, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the, uh, the, the channel, the Striking Scorpion plus, ch uh, plus channel as well, as well as the regular channel. And furthermore, uh, if you want to uh, check out my uh, channel as well, uh, JB Wargamer87, you can hit the subscribe button as well. I really appreciate that as well. And furthermore, for those that really want to support me, you can head over to my Patreon page. Uh, it unlocks a whole load of uh, uh, narrative content and also uh, exclusive behind the scenes. Uh, images and that kind of thing and furthermore you can be a part of our battle reports you get your name featured you get your character uh, being named as well and played as well for the glory of both the ultramarines and for the cadians so uh, it's good stuff so it's really really good fun uh, interacting with my fellow comrades of the patreon page so there you go so uh, that's that cleared out just how to support me and uh, what we're we waiting for, let's get stuck in into this painting tutorial. So the basic necessities that you will need is as follows. You will need the miniature itself. This is the Cadian Forge World uh, Guardsman. So it's a Guardsman first class. As you can see there, I've already done the basing uh, to save a bit of time. This is all dried as well. And of course, uh, just make sure it's all cleaned and ready for painting and that kind of thing. So he's ready, ready to be painted. So the miniature itself, of course, I use the Citadel paint holder, uh, the paint handle. Uh, this is the 2016 version as far as I'm aware, but you can get the more modern one as well. Uh, that has just been come out as well. It's just exactly the same, but there's more improvements to that. So uh, the next thing you'll need, of course. Now, the reason why I use the Citadel handles is for uh, preventing like oils and things like that going on the miniature. You want that to actually go on uh, the handle itself, not to make contact with the miniature. So that's why I use a Citadel handle. And then of course I use a whole range of brushes. So I recommend you get the Citadel range and also you get the Army Painter range. So they're both as good as each other, uh, whichever one you prefer. So. Uh, for the simplicity of my tutorials, I would, will be using the Citadel uh, brushes uh, as uh, its Games Workshop model. So I like to be a little bit of synergy uh, there when doing my tutorials. So of course you need two paint pots, 
uh, so you regularly uh, clean these now. And then of course you'll need this, this is called the micro sole, which is what I use for applying transfers. So this is really, really good stuff uh, to have that as well. And also you will need PVA glue uh, for applying transfers as well. So we'll go through that later on as the miniature progresses. So, first thing you'll need, of course, is to spray. Now, the colour scheme that I've gone for is from the Army Painter range, and this is the Uniform Grey. This is a really good spray. I'm a big fan of this spray. It's a really good uh, spray to use. Um, it's just right because I use this for basing and for the miniature itself. Now, the reason being is because, um, basically for the cloth, so anything that's like t-shirts uh, or tunics or anything like that for the Cadian faction, uh, I use this to spray uh, the whole miniature. So they blend in with the camouflage, so I've done that. Uh, the next thing you'll need is the uh, Serpia shade from Game Color. So this is a really good shade uh, to use. This is for applying it for basing. And then I use uh, a brush, uh, sorry not a brush, a uh, sponge just to add any metal details that I may need to. And then I use a paper, uh, paint paper, special paint paper that you can use uh, from uh, your local or uh, art store that you can get. You'll need a tissue to absorb any paint. And then what I also use for washes, I actually use a tile as well. Just a normal white tile you can see there. So I use that uh, for painting. So that's very handy there. Now the paints you'll need are as follows. So you of course uh, keep a note of this. There will be a, a list of paints in the description uh, below. So you need lead belcher as one. You need white scar. And you've got Kislev flesh. You'll need moat green. And then you'll need warpstone glow. Then you need Cadian flesh tone. And then you'll need rune fang steel. And then you need Abaddon black. And then you'll need Eshin green. And then you need Belthazar gold. And you've got Bugman's Glow, Hussat Copper, and then Cycrax Bronze. And then for the shades, you need Reichlin Flesh Shade, Knoll Oil, and Acarax Earth Shade. Uh, these are all the paints that you'll need to simply paint this miniature. And of course, you'll need good lighting and proper uh, painting desk like I've got here from the Citadel mat, which I use, and of course cutting mats as well, it's just to make things look as though it's a nice clean area, and then you can also watch your favorite films as well, but try not to be distracted because you want to try and get uh, your miniatures painted. So, without further ado, the first stage that I'll be doing is of course to spray this miniature. Now, I use, uh, to spray miniatures, I actually use a double-sided tape, which I find really, really uh, useful to have, because I like to keep these clean, uh, so they will last a lot longer. And, of course, you will need an undercoat, which is the Uniform Grey Spray. So, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing in this stage, and on the next stage, you're going to see this in a completely different colour. So, there you go, that's the Cadian veteran sprayed and now he is ready for painting and the first paint you'll need is of course you will need uh, lead belcher so you need to give this a good shake and of course it is the base paint that you'll need as well uh, apologies for uh, uh, bringing the air paint out you don't need that <laughs> it's the um, uh, the base paint you will need for this stage so what you'll need to do is of course get the right consistency. Make sure you have a wet brush when applying this. And there you go, just add a little bit of water onto here. 
that's it, it's much better. And then just do a base paint on, for example, the Astra Militarum symbol. You don't have to be terribly neat because later on uh, the black colour scheme will be applied later. So you just do this to all the metal details. But obviously when applying this, make sure uh, that you don't go over the cloth. Try not to go over the cloth. Don't panic too much. Uh, we'll sort that out uh, later. So you apply it to the bayonet as well. You can use a larger uh, paint uh, brush that if you need, depending on how large the surface is. So you can see there. So the good thing about base paint, it's got very high pigment and therefore it will give you a good undercoat uh, for painting the models. So you've got the uh, bayonet to do, uh, you've got the uh, gun barrel along the rim there, and any grenades and things like that, and any piping and that sort of thing, they all need to be painted in lead belcher as well. So any details around here, I'll show you later on uh, on the next stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the details and then we'll come back and see what else needs to be done. As you can see now, all the lead belcher has been applied to all the metal details. So I've done, of course, the bayonet. I've done the gun itself. I've done around the back as well, uh, around here. I've done the base coat on the entire backpack, uh, the respirator uh, backpack that the Cadian veteran has. So I've done it so that uh, it's gonna be part uh, black and also I'm gonna add some copper effects as well onto there, just to give it some more color as well. I've done the piping as well. I've done the respirator mask and of course the Astra Militarum symbol on the top of the helmet. Now, the next stage we're going to do is you have to apply this quite carefully is of course we're going to use no oil. Now I literally cover the entire miniature in this stuff. So what I use is I use a Citadel base paint for this. You can use an old wash paint if you want to. And then literally paint over the entire miniature. So it's important to get the right consistency. If you apply too much, uh, try not to as best as you can. So I do this to all of my regulars as well as my veterans. I do exactly the scheme that you see. So when we come back, uh, we're going to check out what to do next. So you can see now that the miniature is fully dried. That's the null oil applied. Now I've given that about an hour or so uh, to make sure it was really, really dry. So you can see there it's gotten all through the cracks and on the backpack and the respirator and all the bayonet and everything like that. So that's pretty much all base colours you'll need uh, to do the metal and the washes. Now the next stage we're going to be using, uh, we're going to be applying, applying the Abaddon Black colour. So Abaddon Black. Citadel Abaddon Black, it's a base paint. Now, the places to paint, to apply, is on the las gun, and on the las gun tip, and on the shoulder pads, and of course on the helmet. So you do all these details here. Just applying these coats, you may need uh, two coats to 
to apply. Make sure you do that nicely. Now you try and be as neat as you can uh, when doing this. It's important to do this uh, neatly. Just apply it around there. And we'll show you later on in the next segment all these black details. Uh, that'll be fully completed. I'm going to do the boots as well. Anything that's leather as well. So you've got the bayonet uh, scabbard, you've got the las, pa uh, las gun pack holder, and the respirator mask as well is going to be painted uh, black. So I'm going to do these details and then next segment we're going to go on to the next stage. There you go, that's the Abaddon black applied and all the black details. You can see that I've done some uh, black details on the respirator, carapace, shoulder pads and armor. I've also done the leather boots as well and the las gun uh, itself as well and the respirator mask uh, there too. So it's coming along now. I've done it so it's a simple colour scheme because with the Imperial Guard army uh, you want these to be uh, quite numerous in number. So the next stage we're going to be doing now is we're going to sort out all of the metal details and for this you'll need Rune Fang Steel. Rune Fang Steel is a Citadel layer paint give the paint a good shake, I'll just give that another good shake. There we go. So there you go, that goes like that. And you can see here uh, with the miniature now, I'm going to paint the bayonet there. Brief details to there. There on the top there. So once you've done this, this is the longest piece you'll need to do for the guard. You may have seen my ultramarine painting tutorial. The Space Marine takes a lot longer but with the guard it's a lot quicker. So you do all the metal details. That's that there. And then you do the last gun pack. Like that. I'm happy with that. And if there's any like buttons and things like that, like on the pouches and the water bottle and things like that. Uh, you um, paint them just to bring out the contrast. So, for example, the button here, the button there. You can even do the grenade if you want to, and the aquila, and anything that's metal that needs to be touched up. Now there's some areas that I may not paint especially around the respirator backpack that's because we're going to be applying some bronze just to give it uh, some character to make these guys really stand out. So uh, we'll come back and we'll see this miniature with more vibrance and revealing all the metal details. There you go, that's all the metal details being applied. Now, later on, I will be going back with Runefang Steel to do the chipping effect first. But what I like to do is I like to have a uh, clean miniature before I apply any chipping and that kind of thing. I just think it's a lot easier to do. It's up to you. You don't have to do it that way, but uh, it's purely from a subjective 
uh, point of view. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be applying the uh, skin tone. Now obviously I can't paint the face because it's a uh, respirator helmet has covered that because he's a Cadian veteran but I can paint the hands however that's holding the gun. So what you'll need is you'll need Bugman's Glow and this is a base paint from Citadel uh, paint range. So again be careful as to not go over the edges. It's quite a dark skin tone but you can see here, you just paint the hands there. And you do this to both hands, let it dry, and then we'll go to the next stage. So there you go, that's the uh, base coat for the skin been applied. And two thin coats I recommend uh, for painting over the uh, grey undercoat from the Army Painter uh, Uniform Grey. So once that's done, the next uh, paint you're going to use, it's not really a paint, it's a shade, and you're going to be using the Reichland Flesh Shade. So Reichland Flesh Shade, just apply this quite quickly. So you just do that there. Painting it here. Just a little bit there, and then a little bit here. We've just done that there. Just a little bit right there, and on the thumb as well. So whilst the skin is drying with the uh, Reichland Flesh Shade, um, the next stage we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting the uh, eye, sli uh, eye vision slits. Uh, so I'm going to use the layer paint Warp Glow, Warp Stone Glow. Again, Citadel Range layer paint. And you paint this carefully into here. Just paint that like so. Just do that here, like that, and already it really is coming to life. Like I said in the uh, in the past, I'm a huge fan. Of these Forge World Acadian veterans, I really do wish Games Workshop would re make them. They probably will uh, one day, just to touch up here. Um, they probably will one day, but it's not yet. The Guard are desperate for a revamp. They are desperate for a revamp. Rest assured, the shield of the Emperor will have their reinforcements very soon. Workshop. Sometimes you can go over the green, just go over the top of it with the same colour. It doesn't have to be terribly neat. There you go. Lovely. And that's coming along nicely. Now, with the same paint, the next stage, we may as well paint the visor uh, whilst the flesh is drying. And you just apply bad and black on the top corner on the vision slit. And then quickly just blend it in like that and do the same on this side as well. So just do that like that. It's looking good. He's coming along nicely. 
can't wait to paint the rest of these. So sort of really bring these miniatures to life. There you go, look at that. So that's there, that's that slit there. And then the next stage we're going to use is Elysian Green. Elysian Green, now what Elysian Green, green does, it uh, brings out more contrast on the lens. So you paint this on the bottom line. You can use a layer brush for this if you're skilled. If not, you can easily use an artificer brush. Do the same here. So there you go. Just apply that like that. And then the next stage after that, to really bring out the colours, use Moat Green Citadel layer paint. Just to bring the colours out really. Ready. Like that. There you go. So that there is the eye lens for the Cadian veteran. And the next stage now, it looks as though the hand tone, the actual rifle flesh shade is dried a lot quicker than I thought. It was actually quite a warm night. So that's really, really good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to apply Cadian flesh tone on the hands. So Cadian Flesh Tone is a layer paint and we're going to paint it on the fingers. So we're going to be doing that. Again, a little bit of paint, a tiny bit of water. And obviously try not to go over the edges. This is quite delicate. If you make a mistake, don't worry. Be quick and with the excess paint and allow it to dry. Whilst that's drying, do another zone. There you go. So there you go. Just going to apply this paint and then we're going to apply the next stage. So there you go. The Cadian flesh tone now has been applied and it's given that close skin now on the hands a lot more contrast. Now the next stage uh, we're going to be doing now is we are going to paint and apply kids leather flesh. Uh, it's a Citadel layer paint. Giving this a good shake off camera. And then with a layer paint brush you very carefully in fact, I'm going to change brushes for this. I'm going to use my Artwissa layer brush for this because this requires very careful painting. I love the Artwissa layer brush, it is very, very handy. So, just applying very carefully. the fingers, trigger thumb on the skin here, just very carefully and that will come out really nicely and all those paints are all combined already 
this Cadian veteran is coming to life. So in the next segment we're going to show you what to do in the next stage. You can see now all the flesh tone details are now finally finished. So it's coming along really really nicely. Now the next stage we're going to do I'm going to use the artificer layer brush again and I've got to do the just a tiny paint, tiny little dot on the vision slit. Tiny little dot which goes just there. Perfect. And it goes there, like that. You can see that there, just brings it a bit of colour into the miniature. So there's two dots there on the visor. That's the visor completed. And the next stage I'm going to be doing now, now this for the insignia is I'm going to use the base paint Mephiston Red. Now this is to do the insignia. Now this guardsman is in the ranking system in my narrative series. He is a guardsman first class. These are veterans. So different classes of veterans. Or privates or enlisted ranks. Just do that there. He's a guardsman first class and he has his insignia on the top there. Give that another coat just to make sure. That's coming along, that's come along really good already. It's coming along nicely. Cadian veteran. Soldier. The Astra Militarum. So that's that done. Straight away. Simple as that. And what we're going to do now, I'm thinking I'm going to leave this silver but just on the top here I want to add some brass details. So this is what I'm going to do. Now, what you'll need is you'll need Balthazar Gold base paint. And with this paint you need a good shake. So, here we go, just probably need a little bit more of a shake here. So just looking at the miniature right now and seeing what else it needs majorly and already we're almost finished this is how quick and easy the guardsmen are to paint now i'm going to use i'm going to use a, a layer brush for this I'm going to use a layer brush and i'm going to paint the top here I'm just going to paint this top along there. Now I'll give this a couple of coats. This is a base paint, which is good, so it's got high pigment. And when we come back, we're going to apply some special effects onto the backpack. So when we come back, I'm going to do the next stage. There you go. Now the brass has been applied. That's the Belfazar gold. You can see there. Now the next stage is we're going to apply Acrax Earthshade. Acrax Earthshade is a shade paint from Citadel Miniatures. 
And you apply this carefully onto here, just to give it contrast. So you do that there, apply that over the entire brass details. It's as simple as that. There you go. Let that dry. And it could be dry very quickly. Um, uh, the weather tonight is pretty hot. So, which is good because it speeds up the process for drying. Now, the next stage we're going to be doing is we're going to do the chipping effect. Now whilst that's drying I'm going to be doing the chipping effect. So like I said earlier we're going to go back to the Rune Fang steel. Now I don't do any chipping on the las gun. I do the chipping on the shoulder pads, the boot pads and uh, the helmet. Those are the things that I do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use an artificial layer brush for this. Use an artificial layer brush. And just very carefully go over the edge, not too much, just a little. Just a little where it's a bit warm and that kind of thing you just apply these details and you go over this all over the metal details and already this miniature is almost done and ready to be reinforced for the 18th Canadian Army Group So I'm going to do this also, apply a little bit of the mask here, just to give it some depth. Just a little bit there. There you go. So that's the mask there. I'm going to do the helmet and a little bit of chipping around here and that kind of thing off camera and we'll see what the next stage is and also uh, just just let you know give this about 10 to 20 minutes to dry here. So you can see now all the chipping effect has now been applied the Canadian miniature is really coming to life and it's almost finished now the next stage we're going to do is now that the uh, Acrac Surf Shade has been dried, we are going to apply Hussat Copper. Now Hussat Copper, make sure you give this a good shake. You can see there, whilst I'm shaking this. I've done a, actually I've done a very, very faint chipping on the LAS gun. I take that back about what I said earlier on, just very very faint with the artificial layer brush. So uh, that's what I've done there. Now that has that copper. This is a good paint this is. It really gives that brass effect, comes, in, uh, comes to life. Just apply a little bit of this and you just simply apply that on these lines here. So you do this to all the lines, placing it to the side. To the point. You just do that there. Come on to the next stage after I've done these details here. 
Now you can see the edge highlighting uh, with the Hussack Copper really does stand out now on the miniature. Now to finish this off you need Cycorax Bronze. Now, Cycorax Bronze, just a very faint highlight, not too much. This is a layer paint from Citadel. So just to give it a bit more colour on top there. Let's give it that extra colour. Just a little bit on the top here, on the side, and on there. Easy as that. So it's all finished. That's that stage complete. And the other stage we're going to do now is we're going to use uh, Eschen Grey, the layer paint from the Citadel paint range. It's a lovely paint. And just to double check these parts here, these odd rags and things like that, just to paint these bits here. can go over the lead the leather patches if you want to. That's probably what I'll do. Just very, very faintly. You don't have to go over the top because remember, there's loads of guardsmen. They are numerous in number. And I think that is completed. I'm just going to tidy this up here around the back. I think we'll do that. Just to tidy this area along the back here. So that's that stage complete. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to go on to the basing. So there you go. So that's all the painting done for the miniature. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to do the highlighting. So we're going to get stuck in with that right away. So I'm going to use just a faint highlighting brush here of White Scar. Just very, very faint. Just an old brush. In here. I put this a little bit on the hand. You just do a bit of highlighting on there. It's as simple as that. On the basin. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you guys what to do. the next stage. So there you go, it's not, it doesn't go over the detail, just do it very very gently, take your time and just do that there. Now once that's done, uh, I'm going to now apply the Gain Colour Levea Wash. So you apply the Gain Colour Levea Wash, just use an old brush here, and just go over some of the details. Just roughly like that. And if you want, just blend it in. And in all the colours here. Now you allow this to dry for a good hour uh, because if you apply it too quickly when doing the flocking it won't look good. 
because the flock will be attracted to the wash. So you don't want that. So you just do that. And then now we're going to go on to the next stage. So whilst the serpia is drying onto here, you may as well do the transferring. Now I've already applied a little bit of PVA glue and I'm going to put some water on the transfers that I need. So I have the Cadian symbol and then I have the army group symbol. I like to soak in uh, for a few seconds here. So whilst that's soaking in, apply a little bit of watered PVA, PVA glue. Now the reason why I use PVA glue is because it's strong and furthermore it doesn't mist up the transfer. But then you use the micro seal to apply the second coat. So let's soak in the transfer if you're ready. Apply the transfer over to here, make sure it's nice and aligned, like that, that was so quickly, just double check, yep that looks pretty good, just, just a bit more, lovely, and then do the Cadian faction symbol. apply these transfers over to here so I'm really looking forward to painting these veterans loads to paint for the Cadian army I'll never run out of things to paint my motto on the channel is there's always something left to paint one of them's the Cadian army. So there you go. And then straight away, applying this very carefully, I use Microsol. Apply on the transfer. So just paint that over the top like that. It just gives it a, a good backing and also it will flatten itself out. The transfer will basically melt a little bit, so go over the contours of the uneven surface, giving it a much better finish. So I'll lower that to not. Allow this to dry, and then uh, let that dry, and then we'll do the flock. And we're almost finished. And the other thing I'm going to point out as well is once it's fully dried, the transfer, uh, just apply some null oil just to make it a bit grubby and dirty. So uh, there you go, I'm going to allow this to dry and then carry on to the next stage. Now, once the uh, Acroac Surf Shade uh, sorry, the Laveo um, Serpia shade has been dried. Uh, now you can put the flock on. So I use PVA for this, and this is from TSS Verdant Green. Uh, it's the colour. So TSS is the company, and the colour is Verdant Green. And this is to do the green flock. I use this for all of my one forty k models. Just apply a little bit of this, tiny bit there, lovely jubbly. I just apply a little bit of flock very carefully over here. And we'll 
use a stick just to go over the PVA. Tap it off there, give it a blow, and there you go. Much better, gives you that contrast there. Now, there's <coughs> the last stage, come on, something in my throat. Um, the last stage, or second to last stage actually, because I've got to wait for this to dry to apply that null oil is to paint the rim of the base. Now I use um, Eschen Grey for this. So Eschen Grey, it be applied and you do two thin coats. Now, minimal contact as possible. So, apply here. So two thin coats of the base here. And now the reason why I do this is because the base is too bright and with the paint, with the Eschen Grey, the beauty of Eschen Grey keeps the tone down and it blends in really nicely with the contrast of the base. So the first thing you want to look at when looking at the miniature is the miniature rather than the base. Your natural eye. So you do that. And then the miniature is finished. It's as simple as that. And that's how you paint your Canadian soldiers. And then the next segment you're going to see is that you're going to see it, the miniature in its full glory. Once the miniature is now based, you can see there it's all dry. The last stage you need to do is of course add Ministorum varnish, give this a good shake for at least a couple of minutes and your miniature is fully completed. Thank you for watching this painting tutorial on how to paint a Cadian soldier of the 18th Cadian Army Group that are featured on the Striking Scorpion 82 and JB Wargamer 87 battle reports. If you want to follow my channel, please consider hitting the like button as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content. Do consider heading over to my Patreon page if you want to support my work further. And also you can check out the merch store. And you can check out the Striking Scorpion 82 Plus channel for more painting tutorials. Thank you for watching this video and happy wargaming.